Um, yeah. So welcome, Sylvie. Thank you for I having me. I did announce it, but could you also please repeat your own last name so I can remember? Alices, you did a perfect job. Oh, I did? So you were mm -hmm. watching? Okay, perfect. And I kept getting distracted by my computer, and I was like, I don't want people to think that I forgot, but then I was like, no, <laughs> no, everything's okay. Um, welcome. No, you did a great job. Welcome. Thank you. Um, welcome to, the, to, to Catching Up with Metal Aid. I'm just going to do this too. Um, so this is Sylvia, everybody. I'm just going to do a very brief introduction on you, and then I'll let you share anything about your history and past that you want to. Okay. Uh, this is Sylvie. She's currently an uh, artist and resident at Harbor Fund Center. Um, she's also um, a co-curator, right? It's the best yeah. name for it. Co-curator um, of a few shows, right? Because um, it was... Yeah, I mean, I, I helped curate some shows while I was in grad school, but yeah. the, the main show is, is um, Dream Machine. Dream which Machine, happened. yeah. Last yeah, week. yeah. Um, so... And then, yes, she's a, a lovely cu cu co-curator uh, with Betsy, Betsy Lewis, right? Mm -hmm. The camera keeps sliding, I'm sorry. <laughs> with Betsy, who is also another uh, lovely individual. Um, and yeah, I'll let you take over. Tell us about where have you called home? What beautiful experiences sure. have you had in your life? Go ahead. So I, I grew up outside of New York City in the suburbs. Um, okay. And... Both my parents actually went to art school. So oh. when I was growing up, it was really nice because I was in a very creative household and I was yeah. like forced to do something more stable uh -huh. or exactly. anything like that. So okay. when I was like, I want to go to art school and I want to be a jeweler, they were like, yeah, sure, that's great. Go ahead and do that. That sounds like fun. That's amazing. Um, so that was great. So I did my undergrad at Rochester Institute of Technology um, oh. in upstate New York. So Perfect. just across the lake from here. Toronto. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, just across the lake. Yeah. And um, when I graduated, I went out and I worked as a bench jeweler for a couple of years and then decided I was ready to get back into it, make my own work again. Um, as well as kind of have a degree in my back pocket for teaching later in life. So okay, I went um, to SUNY New Paltz, uh, State University of New York, and got my master's there. And now I'm up here doing a residency at Harbor Front Center. That's at Harbor Front step, Center, so. yes. And we love uh, having you here at, uh, at Toronto. Although I kind of, I'm kind of sad that I didn't get to spend time with you at the studio because you came after me, two years after yes. me, I think. But hey, we're a family at Harbor Fun Center, so yeah, we're together um, now. Can I pick your brain a little bit about SUNY? Because I've always wanted to know more. Oh yeah, Just pick away. Tell us because it's such a good school, and I wasn't aware of uh, New Paltz till I think it was New York Jewelry Week two years ago. Mm -hmm. That they had a big show, right? Mm -hmm. And that um, lovely, what do you call that? It At wasn't Hotel a warehouse. Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, Hotel yeah. Chelsea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I was blown away. And I was kind of embarrassed that I didn't know about them. But I was like, hey, I can't put up, I can't, I can't keep up with everything that's going on in this space because it's so big. But then from my understanding, it's one of the best schools, right? It is an incredibly good school. And okay. I, I think the funny thing is it's like, the, the arts program there is fairly small. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, it's a, it's a liberal arts university. So yeah. it's not kind of as well known, uh, like broader the right. university okay. within the arts field because okay. it's, you know, the art program is very small there. So, yeah. um, but uh, the program head is Myra Mimlich Gray and Lynn Batchelder uh, is, okay. uh, also, she's yeah. um, the other full-time professor. And then there's a rotating cast of fabulous adjuncts, you know, including... Amanda Lynn is Pope great. And... I love Lynn. Lynn's amazing. Okay. Yeah. yeah go on. So um, it's great faculty. They're super encouraging as well as just an incredible wealth of knowledge. That's amazing. Um, and Which the, is what do you want for a school, right? It's like having access to that incredible wealth of knowledge. Absolutely. And the graduate program is um, super self-directed. So okay. it's very open to allow you to do whatever you want. You want. Which okay. is really, really amazing. Like, 
so there are people working in metal there are people working in silicone people laser okay. cutting like doing all kinds of different things which is okay. really fun because you have such a diverse group of students who are your you know your cohorts and your exactly. collaborators and things like that which is really fun and it, you know they're also great people to learn from so also tell me this in terms of facilities and stuff, because you just mentioned a whole bunch of different practices within like somebody doing silicon, somebody doing metal. There's, they have everything available? Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, wow. Outside of the metal studio, there's a huge 3D printing lab that has like oh, tons wow. of 3D printers that we can use if we want to. Okay. Um, but like basically whatever tool you would use in metal, they, they have, have at least one of them, probably. Wow, that's um, amazing. Which is awesome. And that then... Was, that was a big draw for me. Also, another question for me. How many students per the year? The number of grad students between the yeah. two years uh -huh. rotates from, like, 10 to 12 students. Oh, okay. So it's a um, decent size. It's not, like, super yeah, so small. Yeah, you've got okay. anywhere from, like, four to six okay. people in your year, which is great. That's good. That's yeah. a pretty good size. Yeah. And that's where you, did, is that where you met um, Betsy? Betsy and I had actually met at a snag conference. Oh, I think, okay. I think it was the Boston conference. Um, that conference was like a hub for a lot of people to meet. Yeah. I met I feel so like many I also amazing met people. A lot of yeah. People that year. Um, yeah. So we met there and then kind of like, stayed in touch a little bit because she was in the Hudson Valley working at Ornamentum. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And then, so I like had run into her there a couple times and then we both ended up at New Paltz and we were like, oh my God, hi. Hi. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. See, that's why it's always so good. Oh, Lynn's here. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> Uh, that's why I think it's so essential for, uh, if you get a chance to go to these conferences or uh, any of the other events that happen, more so in states. We don't have a lot in Canada, unfortunately, yeah. um, which is one of one of our, our goals at Metal Aid, hopefully in the future, is to have a little bit more of, of these sort of things happening in Canada. Um, but that's the beauty of these conferences that you meet, or not conferences, just all these events that you meet so many people. Uh, most of the people that I've met in the States through my networking and stuff has been at the, like, Snag and New York Jewelry Week. Yeah. Those I, two. Really, everyone is so nice. Oh, it's goldsmithing like, people. It's you like... Know, everyone's so nice, so it's like, okay, yeah, you might not know anyone, or you might, you know, but it's it, like... They just, just take you right in. Introduce yourself, and exactly, people exactly. will welcome you with open You arms. just need, because I always, um, I used to go to George Brown. Mm -hmm. to get people to advertise because I was somebody who went to snag every other year not every year because it's also expensive for us yeah. to go but the, George Brown was always like can you come and talk to students and tell them how important it is to go and I was like honestly and some of them I was like honestly this is not as hard as you think it's and there's scholarships and things that you can mm -hmm. apply for to get like the cost could there's a trunk show if you have work you can sell at the trunk show there's ways to compensate the money but the the networking that comes out of these are priceless yeah and, and that's absolutely yeah and that's how that's how betsy and i had met was doing like one of the like work study scholarship things we were yeah. both put on the like same job or something and yeah. then you know it's like it's there's there's so many interconnections and, and relationships that you build that like do so much for you uh, at the end of the day and it's yeah and I always told them they're like oh but we're shy we don't know how to talk to people I was like you don't need to do anything you just need to be nice yeah and just make sure that people are aware of you yes if you go stand in a corner and turn around and not look at anybody then yeah chances of anything happening is going to be very slim but if you you know go put yourself out there you don't need to be super chatty you don't need to be super talkative you could definitely build some very good connections definitely you and Betsy being a great example yeah yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about your experience in Toronto and how we're fun. I have had an amazing time here. So, yeah. Um, I, I mean, one of the main reasons that I was like really interested in the Harborfront residency was because it was a group studio setting. Yes. And I love that. Like, I don't really want to be like 
home alone. Working, yeah, no. You know, toiling no. away all alone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's not really my vibe. Especially so. at this point of our careers, right? Maybe later down, you might be ready to have your studio at home. But especially for me, too, that's why Harborfront was so great. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, no, totally fine. So I've met, like, the stu- the ladies who I share the studio with are amazing. Um, yeah, they Shel- all are. Shelby was on chatting with you yes Shelby Dodds ago, yes Shelby yes. Dodds and Emma Pirantanemi Pirantanemi yeah say that right yes um, yes you did yes you know she's a big part of Metal Aid as well yes she um, is and they she's were the hero. ones who really introduced me to you guys and all the great work that Metal Aid is doing so I was you know it's just it was such it was so nice to kind of be able to come in and have a jewelry community Oh, yeah. Right there for me, which was really nice. That's good. You know, I had some knowledge of some Canadian artists. Yes. But, you know, not a ton. And so through the studio and Metal Aid, like, it was like, oh, wow, here's my jewelry family up here. Which was, like, really amazing. (laughs) You're our honorary Canadian. Are you you a citizen here? I am not. You're not. I'm here on, like, a temporary work permit. Work permit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I guess for Harborfront you would need that, right, to get. No, no? actually, I needed it to like make a living to support myself at Harborfront. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Um, I just turned my camera. So, yeah, because I so I like I work at um, the Aga Khan Museum. Oh. Uh huh. I didn't um, know this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh so, wow, that's a spectacular place. That don't know the Aga Khan Museum is a museum that focuses on Islamic art. Yes. Um, and outside of the beautiful work that they have inside the galleries, the building itself is it's magnificent, stunning. Um, so it's been really nice to to work up there. Um, I had no idea you worked at Aga Khan. Mm-hmm. When are you working this? I'll come. Is it open? They are opening tomorrow to the public, actually. Oh, good. Good mm-hmm. to know. Good to know. That's a good. See, that was the announcement of the week. We wanted to say that Aga Khan is opening up. Um, <laughs> were you there when they had that magnificent jewelry show at the Aga Khan? Mm, no. No. They had a really good, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was about a year, year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And they had a really good Mughal pieces. Uh, yeah, like big emeralds, big rubies, everything big. Like it was nice. It was a very, very nice show. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's great. So mm-hmm. I'm just curious because I always knew there was complications with artists coming down here for the residency with just bordering, like crossing borders, um, telling that you're living here or not and whatnot. Was that any, any, any like difficulty for you or did you, I don't, I don't have to know about the process. You don't have to tell me what happened. I just want to know if it was annoying or um. a lot of work. Once, so I had done like a ton, well, first of all, I had been warned that it would be difficult to get (laughs) here as an American. Um, So I had started doing like research and I was on the government immigration website, like for hours and like, couldn't really figure it out. Yeah. And it's always complicated with this stuff. Doesn't matter where you're going or what country you're going from. It's it always doesn't matter, and they yeah. don't write it in plain English either. So yeah, exactly. Like, it's it's political English, what I yes. call it, where yes. nothing makes any sense. You keep reading it, and you're like, I'm just more confused than ever before. Absolutely. Yeah. So <laughs> eventually, through some like family friends, I got put in touch with an immigration lawyer up here. Okay. And she was the one who got me pointed in the direction that I needed to go. Okay. So when I, you know, got to the border ready to move here, I had my paperwork, you know, I had my work permit. It was all ready to go. So basically all I did was activate it at the border and then, you know, just, okay. So there was, okay. Okay. Here here you are. Now you're here. And now you're here. Welcome. Welcome Um, to Canada. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of just like, like, once I figured out what I actually needed to do, uh-huh. it was, it was, a it was fairly straightforward. Process. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. And um, if anyone's interested in doing that, like feel free to reach out and pick my brain. Cause I see didn't. you're so sweet. That's why I love you. You're great. You're always like, you're, you're a, you're a community person. That's why, that's why I have a special place here, especially after I saw 
maybe we should talk a little bit about uh, Dream Machine. Actually, let's talk about your work first, and then we'll go to Dream Machine. Because sure. I know you do a bit of weaving with metal, right? I do. Very... And I yes. have been doing some weaving experiments at home with metal. Okay. Um, so we're going to, I guess, should we do a little show and tell? Right yeah, now? of course. Of okay. course. Anytime, anything. There's no, there's no routine here. So you, you do okay. it with your... Yeah, because I want people to see your work first. That's actually better to see. Oh, wow. So these are some experiments that I've been doing. I've just basically just been weaving with metal. And I'm not exactly sure how they'll come together, but I think I'd like to combine them into some sort of, like, tapestry or something. Um, that would be incredible. Because when I was... We'll get there eventually, too, but your beautiful kilts that you're making right now... Yeah, I don't know and, why. I was, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get there because like yeah, you know. yeah, because that's why I saw those and I was like, this the, the combination. Oh wow, this is yeah. amazing. So okay. those are some kind of thoughts for the future, and then this is some um, of my previous work. Yes, a little basket. That's amazing. Um, I didn't have a ton at home, so. Oh no! This is this is fantastic right now. Was that enamel work, Sylvie? Yep. So this one, this one, oh, and wow. this one actually are all enameled. Um, so and nice. they're brooches. Um, so that that you know textile element. Yeah, for sure. It's very exactly. Yes. Okay, you said it. And then I was just say that right some fun little earrings. So what's the like? What's are you were you always interested in textile? Yeah, I okay. would say um, my mom actually was a fashion designer when I was growing oh, okay. up. Okay, there you go. Um, so I was exposed. So I like grew up sewing and doing projects like that and stuff. Okay. So it kind of came back around when I was in grad school. I started incorporating, okay. you know, the textile things more often. Um, and then this. Yes. Is the quilt I've been working on, which is That's amazing. done now. It's so cool. Honestly, I would I would die for this. Thank you. And then the And you back, did the whole thing yourself? Mm-hmm. Wow. And then the back you just have stitching from the front. Just kind of outlined. Um, this is crazy. This is like this is why then and now I feel I feel ashamed of myself again. I'm like, look what this person did with their time, and look what I did with my time. <laughs> As don't you can see, my bench is still empty. No, I don't. I don't. I'm just kidding. But I have. I get so excited when I see things like this, um, because also I have to, in between parentheses, um, you you are like me. You're very lucky to have parents that came from an artist background, because it like makes. It all the difference. Um, yeah. And that's why I was like, so where does the textile, sorry, I'm just turning the comments on if anybody has any questions for you. Oh, yeah. Um, that, because I was like, there must be an association with the fabrics, because there's all these things that when we're kids that gets engraved into our mind. And I'm not saying that people who don't have artist parents or not, like, don't have the same capabilities. Obviously, they do. But for me also, like, you know, coming from um, a Middle Eastern sort of family, you know, if the regular... Um, sort of attitude towards what I wanted to do would be a little bit negative, especially as a man or whatnot. Right. Um, but just having a designer father and a pastry chef mother that they were completely understanding of, you know, being involved in the art scene, not associating, uh, associating it with like a certain sex or a certain like, you know, type of income or whatnot was very, very relaxing, I guess, for me. Yeah, and it makes it, I think it makes it that much easier to oh, yeah. go ahead and do it because you know you have the support of them. Um, yeah. Which is and, amazing. And yeah, and then, you know, as a kid, like, I always was around, like, either my mom was doing her pastry work or my dad was building furniture. So in between, not that I gravitated more towards my dad, obviously, but it's still, like, when I remember that. Sorry, my camera is so annoying today. It keeps sliding. You know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to take it out because this is going to drive me crazy and everybody else yeah. probably. And I'm just going to put it here 
There we go. That's yeah, better. I just have mine propped up on my computer. Yeah, that's what I did. Because I have this new device that holds it, but I'm like, clearly, I didn't <laughs> test it out before. <laughs> and I'm just well. doing something right, so I'm just going to do this. Yeah, so, and also to go back to your work, because um, I've seen some pieces of your work, but I've never seen the enamel work. Mm-hmm. And then the other um, weaved, uh, it was with copper, right? With, mm-hmm. And is it copper strips or? Yeah, so I basically okay. took like really thin copper and rolled it through the rolling mill so that it okay. was flat. Okay. Um, and then I used it basically like yarn and, you know, just wove with it. Um, You're so cool. You're oh. like, <laughs> honestly, this is like, yeah. And um, the fact that you're trying to do the, like, maybe have a have a marriage of kilts with that, it's just, I mean, not the kilts, but the idea and the designs that you have with this. Yeah, absolutely. Very fitting. And as I've been quilting, because that was kind of like, you know, everything shut down, the studio closed, I wasn't in, at work anymore, and I, I needed an outlet. Like, yes. I needed to do something creative otherwise I would not have gotten through yeah this time like I it would have been bad so I turned to sewing and quilting because it's not something that I often have time yeah for so I was like okay and I just had like a ton of fun with that quilt and as I was it shows and looking at it and looking at the back it got me thinking about you know those joints and You know, quilting has such a history of community as well. Yes. You know, it's oftentimes a community activity. And and there's so much tradition and history embedded within quilts and those patterns and things like that. And, you know, I, a lot of my work is about, you know, home and the connections that we have with place, which a lot of quilts and textiles, you know, also do. So... It's kind of natural for me to to think about quilts with my with my future work. So those will definitely be some things I explore when I when I can get back into the studio. And for sure, no, it's like, just really heartwarming to hear stories like this to see that people because I think this time definitely had an effect on everybody one way or another. Um, for some people, it, it might come sooner. For some people, it might come later. But I think we all had a bit of a, of a, revelation, a revelation, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, we all started thinking a bit differently. And to hear that you started picking up on something that, you know, we generally don't have time for this stuff. Like, I'm sure you've always wanted to do this, but you never really had the time. Yeah. I think and the then, last quilt I made was, like, like four years ago or yeah. something. Here you go. Or like, you know, all these other things. Like, when was the last time I only sketched for my clients? And I've had all these ideas in my head that kept rotating every night, (laughs) coming back right before sleep. Right as I want to sleep, they all come. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you should do this. Of course, right? And then I just don't ever attend to them. But then now I'm like, oh, my God, I could just go and sit down in the park Mm -hmm. and, like, sketch for myself when I don't have to do any sketches for anybody. Yeah, totally. Which is great. To be a little bit freer um, yeah for sure so yeah and obviously everyone kind of approached this time differently and for some yeah. people you know they were like i don't want to make anything right now which like, is totally fine didn't have the mental energy which is yeah. totally fine because it's you know underrated super stressful time even if you're like doing okay there's still this like underlying stress of everything oh, yeah. happening in the world right now so yeah which is you know. i think it's exactly um what it would like it was brought to our attention that it's just so many things can be so unpredictable and when we were talking about this i you said something that i wrote it down and i told you i'm going to use this because i loved it you said which i think is one of the best quotes i've heard during this whole pandemic and you were something along the lines that you were like as artists we deal with un- with so much uncertainty all the time that this was yes it was very difficult but i think looking at my other friends i think all my artist friends it was very difficult for some of us. Like I had a very hard time at the beginning, but then it was just like, oh, like financially, I've always sort of been like, not to this extent, but like, I don't know about my financials every right. month. One month is very good. One month is terrible. 
So I was like, I'm, and when you said this, I was like, oh my God, I never thought about this. And the reason why I feel like I am a little bit of a stronger person now after all of this, and I think it's kind of a mutual feeling with everybody because we're like, oh, okay. It was a very uncertain, undecided situation, but we all are coming through it one way or another. Yeah, and I, you know, as, as artists, we deal with uncertainty a lot, you yes. know, especially for people who don't have a regular full-time job, you know, they make their living by selling their work and being an artist. Like you're always like, you know, exactly. dealing Making with the curveballs and yeah. all kinds of stuff. So it's like, okay, well, you know, if I make, you know, a third of my income off of shows, you never know how a show is going to be. So exactly. you're always dealing with that uncertainty. So I think, to a certain degree, artists were maybe a little bit better prepared better. to or handle this. Prepare. A, a little bit more better prepared, I would say. Yeah. Right. Um, and then also, when you were just talking about shows, something else popped into my head. Did you have any shows or anything that was canceled during this time? Um, I had a show that was actually, it's with the Handweavers Guild of America. Um, oh, okay. So it's like, a, you know, kind of like a textile show. Um. And it was going to be a traveling show. So the first location basically got cut. Okay. Um, so I'll be sending my work out later than I was going to. Okay. Um, so it's okay. It's just postponed pretty much. Yeah. Not, it's postponed. Okay. They're still kind of ironing out exactly yeah, which what it's going to look like. Okay. But, you know, they said it's still going to be happening in some way. Okay. Um, yeah. Is that, just out of curiosity, that's not the show that Kiff Slemons is doing, is it? I don't know. I no, don't think Kif, so. She's... Kif also did a, did, a, did a show last year when I was in Chicago for, um, that was paper-based. Like, that was uh, like... amazing. Oh, you went there. Okay, okay. The I one thought in the studio? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Was Wasn't so that good. incredible? It was so good. Yeah, I am very, very happy I get to show, and to get to see the show because Nora took me Mm-hmm. Nora McCarthy um, and Aurelie actually with Aurelie which was my mm -hmm. previous guest at the show yeah. uh, and I just had you know like these things are a lot more uh, memorable when it happens with people that also understand what's going on as opposed to just taking like a regular fan who's just like okay this is paper what's going on like right. there was so much hype in the room and I've never met um, Kif before so I met her and I was like oh my god you're an amazing human being I know I was a little bit starstruck when I went, because I also had never met her before and did when I was there. And it was, it was Sorry, awesome. Just, yeah, no, she's an amazing, incredible artist and a very, very perfect human, I would say. Yeah. And her, her assistant, um, Kat Bauer. Yes. Helped, you know, I've met that Kat show too. is also amazing. She is. And so I, you she know, really... met both of them and it was great. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, and then speaking of shows, because your show in New York Jewelry Week, your, the show that you co-curated it, so mm -hmm. I couldn't call it your show, um, was amazing. And I was, I was running, I remember I was running late that day, and then I was with uh, my partner, Philippe, and I was mm -hmm. uh, running and I couldn't find it. And then he was like, I think it's there. And I like looked <laughs> the at the window. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, yes, it is. Because you and Betsy were standing in the window. I was like, yes, we found it. And we came in and I was honestly blown away. And I think I wrote you after and I was like, this was an incredible show. And it really, it was one of my highlights of that uh, New York Jewelry Week. And there was a lot happening that year. So for me to like really remember something. And I pretty much, I would say I remember about 80% of this show. And like, yeah. like Mallory's um, beautiful, mm -hmm. that was beautiful work. A lot of people, a lot of people. So could you tell us a little bit about that and curation and all that stuff? Because I know it's something that I'm interested in too. Yeah. And it would be so, nice to hear some feedback. That was kind of Betsy and I's first like solo curation project you know not associated just the two with of you. university okay. or anything yeah. like that um so it was just the two of us and we really wanted to do something that was accessible to people um yes. you know we were both students and it's it's hard as a student to to get your foot in the door for events like this yes um yes because it's exactly. like 
oh, all these big people are having shows or a gallery invited them. We, we didn't really feel like there was a lot of open calls for Jewelry Week. And, and it's like, how do you participate as an emerging artist? And so we decided that we were going to devise a platform and a show that was incredibly inclusive. Um, okay. And so we wanted to focus on students, emerging and mid-career artists to give them a chance and a platform to show, as well as focus on like political work, identity-based work, and include non-wearable work too. Cause you know, as Betsy and I both make a lot of non-wearable work in yeah. addition to jewelry. And you know, we were thinking, first of all, there aren't as many opportunities for that, we felt yeah. like. And secondly, we felt like kind of some of the big organizations within the jewelry field weren't necessarily talking about the things that the next yeah. generation of makers were yes. talking about or wanted yes. to talk about. Um, Standing so, ovation to you. So yes. we wanted to be a platform for that, you know, to talk about, you know, immigrant experiences, um, you know, perhaps transition experiences, um, all those kinds of things that maybe like larger institutions weren't really addressing because they yes. were, you know, a little bit stuck yeah. in the past. So, yes. So yes. we really wanted to be like a, a platform to show like, this is what the future exactly. of our field this is doing. Is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah. we had we had some really amazing applicants and we're, we're really happy with how it came out. It was a great experience for both of us to go through it as well as to go through it together. Yes. You know, it can be pretty sure. intimidating to yeah, do yeah, something yeah. like that. Doing so, it alone is, yes, yes, for sure. Yeah. So to but, have, yes, go on. So to have her there was great because then we could like go through some of these tough things together. And, yeah figure it Definitely. out together. and i imagine that you guys probably got a lot of feedback and everything or i don't know um yeah just people telling you what they feel like or whatnot but for me it was one of the most successful shows and this is after i realized that you guys had students in there mm -hmm. you had graduating students you had people i did notice that there was a uh, some non-wearable jewelry too and then after i was reading the board and it just kept making so much sense and it was so heartwarming to see that there are people in the field that, because oftentimes I also felt frustrated with that. And I was like, this is a bit stuck in the past. And as much as that's great, and I know how hard, but we also, as the current generation, I think we have to also be mindful about that, that when we grow up and get to a certain, you know, yeah. generation, we also have to be able to be like, oh, I shouldn't do this and just carry my, because it's, and that's one of the things that I think you might agree with this too, that teaching is people that are in the teaching, um, or how do you say that, like uh, academia and stuff mm -hmm. that are teaching are usually a lot more open, this is not a generalization, but open to hearing because, the hearing ideas because then they realize that, because I always learn so much when I teach. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, I had like all these new things, all these new technologies, all these new, whatever. Um, and by teaching, I mean like the, the, the few classes that I did at Harvard Fed Center. So this is not even anything huge, but um, it's very utterly important to be able to be uh, receptive and uh, and um, kind of respectful towards the next generation. Because as much as you're just like, oh, they don't understand anything, they, they don't understand it a lot. Totally. Especially yeah. current issues that are happening. It might be very foreign, and this is another thing that I. You know, you always have to give the benefit of doubt. So I don't blame um, some some things being stuck in the past and whatnot. But uh, because I understand it's hard for people to adjust to change. Yeah. Um, but also, it's such a sensitive and delicate um, subject also within a field that I think mm -hmm. that inclusivity is absolutely should be something that is um, high regarded and high yeah. prioritized yeah. And to see what you guys did with dream machine is there anywhere that people can see the exhibition we, we have an instagram account actually okay um, oh right yeah you do you do okay dream, I, I believe it's at dream machine exhibition okay um, and we did post at least one piece from every artist who is in the show oh amazing um so there's that and 
we're not sure if we're going to do something this year. Okay. Um, for obvious I, reasons. For obvious reasons with COVID, it's yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. a little uncertain about what would actually happen in person and what wouldn't. Um, yeah. And, you know, everything, everything that Betsy and I did was out of our own pocket. So yeah. it's definitely an investment and you're not necessarily going to do that if you're like okay well this might not happen and then i might not get my deposit back or yeah you know sure. something like that so we're thinking about this year and we might decide to do an online exhibition um or we just might decide to do an every other year kind of a thing to, to that's actually a very good idea and, yeah yeah that's a very good idea and then you guys would probably because i know as I said, I don't have any first-hand experience with uh, curating shows. Uh, we had a little glimpse of it for New York Jewelry Week when we mm -hmm. did the event. Yeah. Um, wanted to, uh, you know, introduce Canadian artists at the Canadian Council, which was amazing. But literally, yeah. it we sat down at a meeting and they were like, oh my God, guys, because it was also, we didn't have enough time. So we we're like, this is going to be so much work if we're going to do a physical one. So we did a digital exhibition. <laughs> this is pre-COVID. So we're right. a little bit avant-garde. But, <laughs> 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 but um, I just know, and also experiencing uh, with marie did a lot of uh, mm -hmm. curation or curating, I should say. Yeah. Um, and I saw how much work it is and how much communication, how much energy, how much funding, planning, you know, all of these things go into it. So maybe a two year thing would also not kill you guys after a while. Cause once you get drained and you're like, I don't want to do this ever again. Yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah. We were obviously, we were both super excited for the show and like, yes, of course, ready for it and excited to see everyone. But also at the same time, we were like, we're ready for this to be over. We're, yeah. I, mean, I think it was a little, bit, a little bit more work than we expected. Um, and we also, we had an incredible amount of applicants, which we also weren't expecting. Okay. Like, like way more than either one of us ever thought we were going to get. So I think. If wow. That was That's like, heartwarming though. That's great. It was super heartwarming and it was really amazing. But we were also like, oh my God. This is going to be a lot of work. Yeah, so we but were hey, you guys pulled through. We were constantly on the phone with each other, Skyping, chatting, like, you know, going through it together. Oh, yeah. What, what you have to do, just do what you have to do to pull this through. Because you also go under a lot of obligations with different people, the artists, yeah. the place that you're getting, uh, you know, renting or whatever, the yeah. people that are organizing if it's part of a bigger show. So there's a lot of communication going on. And being two people with very, I, I imagine, limited funding and limited um, access to resources and stuff, then yeah. it would be very, very difficult. So kudos to both of you. Thanks. We need more people like you guys. We, um, we did have, we had a lot of help, though. Um, good. Our friends and... Oh, know. yeah. Friends and family. This, none of this stuff would be possible without friends and family. Yeah, and other artists. Um, you know, we had one of Betsy's friends um, owns a has a design studio in Brooklyn. So he did all of our graphics for us. And, oh, nice. You know, that's Want Studio. Um, that's very cool. Sorry, what studio? Want. Want w Studio. And this is in Brooklyn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, lovely. Okay. Good and to know. so they did graphics for us. And then we had, you know, Betsy had some friends, you know, some other jewelers and metalsmiths help make the displays. And then we had, you know, people help, help set up and take down. And it was an incredible, incredible amount of community and support for us that was That's really good. amazing and heartwarming. And we definitely wouldn't have been able to do it, you know, without these other people. Oh, yeah, for sure. It takes and, an army. <laughs> yes, it takes an army. <laughs> Literally takes an army for these shows. And there's yeah. always, you know, last minute complications. Things don't get delivered on time. Things don't happen on time. So there's you need a lot of moral support and a lot of physical support and everything. So that's when the community comes in and none of this would be, I mean, I know that you guys were definitely the main people of making this show happen. Cause if you are not there, then everybody else is not there. Right. But also it's amazing to see that huge support that you get from, and that kind of support for the Canadians also have gradually gotten bigger and bigger. Cause there's more of us going to these shows now. So yeah. it's very nice to see that, Oh, somebody needs help. There's like, like, and this is when it comes in, like, everybody's there is obviously willing to help. But then when you're like, oh, my God, it's like, 
I know this person and they're like in direct touch with me mm -hmm. at home in my community. So I like gotta go and help them to the best yeah. of my abilities that I can. So it's yeah. amazing. I mean, I wanted to get a ticket to the to the panel discussion you guys had and it was sold out when I went to go get one. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, you guys were like all reserved and I was like, See, that's that's kind of yeah. We were reserved and it was amazing, but then we only amazing. had half of those people show up, and I was what? like, "Why did people sign up when people like you wanted to come? You should have told me. I would have gotten you in." Well, it was a little crazy because that yeah, was the night of our was... opening, also. Okay, 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 okay. I, I like. I really wanted to go and support you guys. Well, the video also for anybody else who doesn't know, the video is up now. So whoever yeah. missed it, it's on our YouTube channel, which your video is going to go on there too. Uh, after after the chat's done, um, but yeah, so it was. I think your show was amazingly successful, and kudos to you for doing it. And I hope that you do it again soon. Um, hopefully, maybe even even sometimes in Canada, you could do a show for yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> I Great. definitely, definitely will continue. Um, and then Maybe how much year. longer of Harborfront? This is, this was your first year. This was my first year. Okay. And unfortunately, I will not be staying in Canada. Um, Don't say things, that. I know. Oh. Man, you were our honorary Canadian. I know. I it's think okay. I, I would like to still think that I can be an honorary You Canadian. can be. I say sorry a lot more than Sorry. There you go. <laughs> right. Um, I'm, still, I'm still trying to pick up the A thing. I'm not great on that. A, you will, you will pick it up. I picked it up again. after about three years that I was here. Oh, okay. And I do it all the time now. <laughs> like today somebody... Um, I was on my bike and somebody passed me by and my, they it, it just did a reckless thing. And I was like, look in your mirror, eh? And I was like, <laughs> I'm literally, yes. Anyway. You were like, oh, I'm Canadian. Yep. Yes. Super Canadian now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so unfortunately I will not be staying. It, there was, it was really difficult, you know, especially with COVID because yes. that's when I was trying to figure this all out, trying to get a visa. I imagine so when you and, said that. Yeah. And everything like that. Um, and as much as I do not want to leave, because I was, don't. I yeah, love, I know. I would love to stay for I know. some more time. But, but like, that's the thing. See, so many things have changed and affected our lives that sometimes we need to make this, the necessary choices now. Yeah. But I've had such an amazing time here, and I've made some really fantastic connections with people yeah. that it I will not just poof and disappear. Like I want to stay involved. I hope not. With what's going up on up here and stay involved with Melly? Yes. Um, you know. You know, co-adorn too out on the East Coast. Like, yes. lots of great things happening here that I am definitely going to continue to stay involved with. Um, because that's amazing. You guys do great things up here. So. Thank you. And you're always, always, always welcome to come back here. I could create my own residency here and you can join the residency program. Yeah. It will be very, <laughs> very limited, but <laughs> you, can, you can definitely. You know, it's one of those like rough and tumble, like make do with what you've got kind of residencies. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It's kind of that kind of residency, and, but, you, but you flourish a lot in it. No, but um, I'm kind of sad by this news, but I also understand uh, yeah. that you have to so are you going back home i that will i'll be going back home to okay. live with my parents again okay. um, so, which is totally fine there's nothing wrong with that yeah so i'll work <laughs> down with them for a little bit do some freelance you know bunch work for people in the area while i figure out what's next. until you figure out what's next yeah i'm not sure really you know, I don't know if it nobody's was sure. or working Right now, for... nobody's sure. Yeah, exact, exactly. No one's sure right now. So I'm not, I'm not alone in this one. Um... Yeah, no, but I mean, I think everybody is in that situation where I honestly don't know. And I told you this when you were talking. I was like, I've decided not to get a studio until right. December because there's so much uncertainty with financials, everything, everything. That I was just like, maybe it's a little bit... Um, better to take things slowly and yeah. also be very aware of your surroundings and what's happening and what you need to do. Just pretty much take careful steps right now until we're kind of back to, if we're ever going to go back right. to that normal. Yeah, and I think, I think this time was good 
you know, for a lot of people just to kind of think, have some more time to really think about those things. Yeah. Cause I think, you know, most of us, we go through, through our lives and it's like one thing to the next, we go, 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 you know, we don't necessarily take the time to like think long exactly. and hard about some of those things and, you know, everything exactly. kind of stopping forced us to do that a little to bit. To do that. Yeah. It you was know? that year of pause. Everybody kind of saw it as a negative thing at the beginning, but I think it probably hopefully will have some positive outcome for a lot of us because it was a bit of a pause for everybody to sort of reflect on you know, how we're affecting the world and how the world affects us and think yeah. about that a little bit um, uh, deeper. And, oh, somebody, uh, well, Yashana is asking, where's home? Sorry, I missed it. Home is oh. NY. You say, yeah, you home, say, is, home is, is uh, New York, just outside New York City. Outside New York City. And Lynn Bass said, nice to see your faces. Oh. It's also, we didn't see your face, Lynn, but I'm very grateful that you came into the chat. Yeah, me too. Um, it's almost time is up. I never oh want God. to say goodbye. I know it's been like more than 45 or 50 minutes now, but you're such a pleasure to talk to. And I'm you very, too. very grateful that you joined us. You, you will always be our honorary Canadian. Um, I will see you before you leave for sure. Absolutely. Um, but yes, again, I know that this is, uh, it's a bit difficult for people to do. Um, but you are amazing for doing it. And you did such an incredible job that I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank it was you. Such an absolute delight to chat with you. As it's it always, always a delight is. to chat with you. Thank you. Always You're so is. lovely. <laughs> You're so um, lovely. And this was a delight. And if people have not been coming to these, you absolutely should. They're a great little Friday afternoon or Tuesday afternoon chat. And yes. It's just it's just so nice to see what everyone else is up to and how everyone else is, you know, figuring out. Exactly. And I want people this. to just get familiarized with each other. So when next time we see each other, you're like, oh, that's so and so. That's right. so and so. Yeah. And it would be it would be amazing. Oh, and Melanie's saying you're amazing. Oh, which you are. Melanie is amazing. Melanie is amazing. Lindsay says thank you. No, thank you to everybody who is joining us. Oh, and just also a quick update. I'm gonna announce this on Instagram, but Tasha's going camping this week so uh this session with next session is actually going to be very exciting should i tell you tell us. it's you noel it's, it's i know it. it's noel it's noel guillaume from montreal but um so we moved it to thursday so it's going to be thursday okay. and friday of next week i'll announce it on instagram though so thank you everybody who joined us i love you, you all you're all amazing this will be nothing without you guys and thank you to a beautiful guest Thank you. Honestly, so thank nice you so much. Everyone. Yes, yes. Bye. Have a good Bye. afternoon.